the culminating swell is really impressive. Anyway, we've got half an hour of daylight left, so we need to get busy fixing stuff. So the boys are going to bring the boat over after washing the sand and sold off, and we'll have a go at uh, fixing her up. So correct mixing levels are, depending on nature, the colder the day, the more catalyst required. If I can get a pot back in. Yeah. Do you want to do a second plan of attack, which is just to laminate something directly over the top as a patch? Yeah, how much fiberglass and stuff have we got? You got heaps. Heaps, yeah. One of the windiest spots, I suppose, in Bass Strait is where we stand right now, perhaps one of the windiest places in Australia. We were up late fixing Paul's boat and having our largest crossing still to do, decided to wait another day. It's deceiving living on an island with coves and beaches. The world looks flat and calm. But if you walk up into the headland, you see the reality of open water. To leave, we needed one long day of predictable seas. That was our window. We picked the, the best spot to spend five or six days on. So there's plenty to do on Deal Island and we had obviously the caretakers there, great walking tracks and it was actually really good for our, our team to, you know, we really built a, a good camaraderie hanging out in that island and just um, shooting the shit all day. It's either this or I crack open a tin of tuna. I think this is a better option. Yeah, I'm sorry. I sometimes feel like it's calmer when I overstretched the knife and it nicks me. That's over a kilo. Gorgeous fish and that's, that's, that'll do me. Four fish for five kikers. How your body's holding up, fellas? Mate, I'm 100% apart from this muscle. I can hardly nail this, man. He yeah, is, yeah. Just solid. We left Deal Island probably a little bit too late. And I knew we were pretty slow from the get-go and, and out we went. And it was kind of a, you know, every man had to just get into his own head and grind away for the day. Um, about two hours out from Deal Island, I started to feel a bit, uh, bit off and it ended up being seasickness and tried to treat it with a bunch of meds. Um, throughout the day and it, it just lingered around for literally about 12 hours until we were a couple of hours um, off Kilcranky Bay. But what can you do? You can't get out of your boat and lay down. Everything was slower. Uh, we didn't talk much. Um, it was nice when we did come together and have a bit of a chat and, you know, you'd try and raise a, a smile out of someone. I got Dan to tell me a story at one stage and he rabbled off all sorts of cool stuff. We've been on the water for about 11 hours. We've probably got three or four more to go. I've eaten pretty much all my supplies and I'm, I'm draining pretty fast. The poor old Matty has been seasick and has a real bad shoulder today, so a real struggle. But this is a long day. Once we land, we get to rest. We'll take an easier day tomorrow, look at conditions, but fucking hell, it's full on. Here we are, at our most vulnerable. You know, the sun going down, the tides turning against us, and we're still hours from shore. And yet it was utterly sublime. I felt as if I was paddling within a masterpiece, a turn of seascape. That is the privilege of the sea kiker. You get to go places, both real and imagined, that others rarely go. And then of course reality kicks in and you've got 15 or 18 k's to do under nightfall, so we just had to pump. And a real nice sense of camaraderie when we come in, you know? It was a real nice thing. Time wise, here he is. 10.24, uh, left at 6.10. <laughs> Big day in the sea. Ah. 
are still flashing. So just a, a light wind, but light wind in our head the whole day, and uh, tides are just big and strong. Poor old Matty, he's been bloody crook as a dog. He's taken more drugs today than he has in the last 10 years. Well, anyway, <laughs> I came home strong. You did, mate. I pad paddled into fitness. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> I got nothing, I got nothing. <laughs> nothing in my legs. <laughs> and you got no bike. <laughs> so one line between Deal and here is about 60 k's. By the time we got out of the channel and then we zedded all the way here, you know, you could nudge 80 k's. So I started with head torches on and finished with head torches on. My legs are going. One, two, three. Yep. Just gonna get dry and put my tent up and uh, enjoy sleeping and then have um, some more sleep for breakfast. Pretty happy to be here. That was, um, yeah, that was challenging getting across there. The last couple of hours was slow, but uh, we, won't, we won't, won't remember that tomorrow. And it's just, it's summer. It feels like an Indian summer too after yesterday, which kind of felt stormy and provocative. And today is back to being blazing hot and I can feel the sun pierce me through my hat, you know? Oh, that day. Um, I don't really want to, I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> if I'm honest, just 16 hours on the took us yesterday. Took it out of me. This leg hasn't really turned on yet. I don't really have a glute today. Like we've come in and we've had this, this morning off in this beautiful sunshine. And imagine if it was bollocking rain and cold and miserable. You'd think, oh crap, we've got to get back in our kayaks again. But it's laying it on for us. Flinders was a bastard, by the way. It didn't want us to come, but now it's happy we're here. Because it took us a lot longer to get here than we thought. It's totally bad. He doesn't know I'm doing this. He can't feel a thing. <laughs> I like the idea of it. <laughs> he, likes the, he likes the idea of it. I just haven't recovered. It's taken me about three or four times as long to do anything today. I keep moving things. I keep like putting this here and then putting that up and I'll move it here. And then I'll just stand over here for a bit. And then I'll click back in and realize what I'm doing and come over. And then I'll put this in here and then move this. And then I'll walk off. I haven't actually done anything for about an hour. We're just on the northern tip of Flinders Island and we're gonna um, head west today around, I think it's called Cape Franklin and I, we'll probably do 15 k's I think. Yeah, we're back on our own again. Craig and Paul have, have had a, a day off to have coffees and go to the pub and um, see a bit of the island while we see a bit of it by the coast because we haven't really done any coasting so far. It's been a trip of crossings and now coasting. You know, we can see trees and rocks and scale um, and can be a bit more intimate with this island. Here's About 25 to their place. Um, or go. about 30. Here we go. Because earlier it was 20, and now it's 25, and then it's immediately already nearly 30. <laughs> the bow scale, I'm getting used to as well. It's a bit random. Because honestly, earlier today, the paddle, tomorrow's paddle, was 20 maybe, with some change, which I don't know what that means. I think with some change means 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Optimistic, you know? It's lying. It is lying to me. It's lying. <laughs> Corn beef with rice noodles. Um, uh, beef stroganoff paste, peas. Oh yeah, peas, my favorite food group. And if it doesn't taste as wonderful as it sounds, I've got lots of cheese to drown it in at the end. Mm. We'd hit a real sweet spot. Our moods were light and the dynamic between us was at a point where silences and conversations were quirky and easy and fun. The weather was good. We were galloping along. Yet I didn't want the Tassie mainland to come into view. At least not yet.
Hell of a journey. Beautiful sunset tonight, bloody good meal. And the expedition's kind of coming full circle. Whether I like it or not, it's going to finish probably tomorrow. 